What's up you guys, welcome to today's video. As you can tell by the title, we are going to do another episode in my Locked Up With series. And this one is pretty heavy today. If you guys are new here, hi, my name is Jess. I'm a person in long-term recovery that has served time in prison and my entire crazy life story is in the description box down below. If you wanna follow me on any other social media platform, TikTok, Instagram, Patreon, that's $2. It's only ever gonna be $2. All of that is linked down below as well as my vlog channel where you can see me doing vlog stuff and my podcast. So there's a lot of stuff in the description box. I am also a proud partner with Groups Recover Together. They strongly lend on harm reduction and they're an amazing team of people. I recently got to do a webinar with Groups and I just love them so much. It was Jessica Kent Day. Kinda, um, but September is recovery month, so that was such a special day. I will link my landing page with Groups as well as my hotline number with them. All right, without further ado, let's kick this thing off. So before I get into like the video, I do just want to say here that it is so easy to judge another person based on their worst mistakes. And people in prison are often in there for the worst day of their life or their worst mistakes or they're victims of circumstance or something bad has happened and they are there, they're taking responsibility for their actions and that is what serving prison time literally is. It is standing in front of a judge saying, yes, your honor, I am guilty and the judge sentencing you to what we in society deem as a fair punishment, which is a certain amount of time. And I wanna say that because I think when we are watching YouTube videos or we're seeing these prison shows or prison content creators are talking about certain things, we see the news, it's so easy to judge someone and you know be hateful or nasty to that person because of the worst, worst day of their life. And I would just like to encourage you all to not do that. I know I don't have to worry about the ride or die crew judging anyone negatively, y'all are amazing. But I just wanted to start this video with saying that because this story is pretty hard. I have done time with a lot of people that have some form of murder charge. It was a weird way to say that, but anything from vehicular manslaughter, involuntary manslaughter, all the way up to capital murder. I have, you know, met a wide range of people that were in prison for that. Maybe they were an accessory to murder, which means you were just there. Maybe they pulled the trigger, you know? There's a lot of different charges under that umbrella. When you're serving time in prison and you get to know these people and you hear their story, it just hits you very different than say, just hearing someone's charges and you don't really get to know them or who they are. So this story takes place when I was, I'm pretty sure pregnant. <laughs> I don't think I had had my daughter yet. And I was at a lower level security prison in Arkansas. I was at this prison for a pretty short time. I got there around six months, had my daughter and was kicked out of this me medium security prison about four months later or so. I might be a little bit off in my timeline. And then I was sent back to the maximum security prison because I had beat up a chomo. And there is a story on my channel somewhere about that. It's pretty old, don't judge me. Um, so I was locked up at this lower level security prison with this woman, but we were not in the same barracks. So I was, in a, I was in one barracks, she was in another. In prison, you go to commissary with your barracks. And I'm going somewhere with this, I promise. So I went to commissary all the time with my barracks and she was supposed to be going to commissary with her barracks. But in prison, if you have a job, which most of us do, all of us do, um, then oftentimes you miss your scheduled commissary time slot for that day. So what happens if you know, you're know you at your job or you're at medical or there's something going on um, like during the day, during that time slot where you're supposed to be at commissary, the guards will let you go down with another barracks for commissary. And commissary is, or some people call it canteen or some people call it store. It is literally a utility closet that sells ramen noodles and hygiene products, soups and crackers and cheese. Um, so utility closet, nothing fancy. Um, and we all have to line up with our barracks and go at our designated time. But if you miss commissary because you're at medical or at a job or whatever, then you get to go with another barracks. I hope I explained that right and I'm not confusing. My brain is very strange. So this inmate will call her Lucy for the sake of this story. Lucy went to commissary with me so many times. It, I felt like every week for like a month, you know, maybe, maybe longer, she kept consistently missing commissary and coming to shop with us. And a couple of girls from her barracks as well had to shop with us. 
So standing in line at this lower level security prison, the rules are a little bit more lax and the rules are a little bit, you know, okay, we could talk a little bit in the hallway. At the max, they didn't want you talking in the hallway and they were super strict and crazy and like on your ass about everything. But in this lower level security prison, we kind of talked in the hallway a little bit. So I had seen her many times. She had this very, you know, positive demeanor and she was like a ray of sunshine. You know, just she'd kind of bounce around the compound and she just seemed like a really nice person, just really happy, really nice person. While at the same time, you could tell that she had a deep sadness. Like she was one of those people, like she'd smile and talk to you and she was super friendly and super nice. But at the same time, you could see this sadness in her, which most inmates have. You know, most inmates are dealing with really heavy things. We can only be cheerful for so long. And I could see that in her. And, you know, I started talking to her. And for whatever reason, I just asked, like, how much longer do you have? And the whole time I thought maybe she's on in on some low level thing, some low level, uh, like maybe drug crime like me. And we were about the same age. I think she was maybe a few years older than me. And she said, oh, I have, you know, I have about eight years left. And I thought, dang, you have eight years left? How long have you been here? And she said, you know, she had been there for a couple of years already. And, you know, I was just immediately kind of sad for her, but I didn't want to ask why she was there in that moment. And the line was moving and we couldn't really have like a deep conversation. So me saying hi to her in like these brief moments and these brief passings eventually led to me asking how much time she has left, but we couldn't like sit down and talk, right? So we are just kind of in the hallway trying to get our commissary and go back. So I'm like, okay, have a nice night. Like it was very brief interactions is what I'm saying. So I didn't see her again for a couple of weeks. And the whole time I was like, well, what the heck is she here for? Like eight more years, dang. And I had felt bad, you know, that she had so much time left. And I thought, you know, I'm a, I'm a short timer. To, in my opinion, 10 years and over, that's not a short timer. Um, seven years isn't a short time. I, like it, these are long sentences, but I, you know, knew that I was coming home in at that point, what, like a 18 months or something. So I thought about it for a while and I got curious because women are bored and we gossip and we're curious. So I just asked somebody one day, someone that had been there for a long time, another lifer, and I just said, hey, do you know um, why Lucy's here? And she said, yeah, Lucy's here for manslaughter. I'm like, oh man, what happened? And she said, you don't know? Being asked like, you don't know why she's here is a really common thing because inmates like to have the tea, they like to have the information. And I wasn't the kind of person that sat around and gossiped or talked about other people. I would ask why you're here if you're in my cell or what your paperwork looks like because it's important in prison, in the politics of it and the hierarchy of it, that people do not help or associate with people that have hurt children, chomos. So, um, but I don't live with this person. I was just curious because we had, you know, talked and had like this little, you know, back and forth and she was always super nice to me and I just really enjoyed like seeing her and saying hi to her. So I was just curious, nosy, I guess, if you will. And um, this lifer told me she is here for manslaughter. She killed her child. And when you say it like that, gosh, it sounds so awful, right? So I'm like, please, please tell me what happened. So the story is that she had a really bad addiction to alcohol and she was a new mother. She just became a mother. Now that, now just to pause here, becoming a mother is so unbelievably difficult. Every single thing in our body changes, everything from our hormones to just everything. And I am someone that has suffered twice now with postpartum depression and it's just very, very difficult. So Lucy drank and she had an alcohol problem. And I guess one night she had a party at her house and she went in to go to bed at the end of the night or the, at the end of this party and she was very drunk and she fell asleep and her baby was on the bed and she had rolled over on her baby and her baby had suffocated and passed away. That I think is every new mother's fear in the world. That is the scariest thing. And just to pause the story here for a second, 
this happened with me, with Riley. Riley is now five years old, but when Riley first came home from the hospital, she was crying constantly. She would never sleep or rest, and I was just so burnt out and so tired. I wasn't sleeping right. I was probably dehydrated. I had postpartum depression. I just could not get this baby to fall asleep. Well, one night I fell asleep with Riley in the bed, and she, I had her like kind of on my shoulder like this, and she was just asleep here. When I woke up, Riley was down by my hip. I woke up in the middle of the night, like, oh, what happened, where's, where's this baby? And she was all the way down by my hip. And for a second, I was terrified to reach down and grab her because I thought that I had just hurt her. I thought that she had just suffocated. So I immediately snatched her up and she was fine. She was just sleeping and I thought, oh, thank God. Oh, it was such a scary moment for me. I just wanted to tell you that because I feel like this could happen to anyone with or without alcohol. You are just so exhausted when you have a baby. You are so exhausted. And if that baby is not sleeping and is just crying and has colic and screaming all the time, it's just, it wears on you and it's so hard. So when I was told that story, now I'm about to become a mother in prison. And I learned over time and hearing these stories to not judge why a person is there, you know, unless they are a chomo or a sex offender. That's different, okay? That is different. We're not talking about that today, but I just wanna be very clear that that is a very different thing. And I know that confuses you guys. I know that confuses you, like murder you would think is the worst, but I am not the judge. I am not Jesus. I am not there to judge someone who is a, the victim of circumstance, but sex crimes against children are something that is not accepted, is not okay by the rest of the inmate population. And often these crimes against children, you know, that rhyme with grape, you get very light sentences for that. While I know people serving life for drugs in prison. So, you know, we are where we are. That's a video for another time. So I just felt so bad for Lucy. And again, I'm not the judge. I am not Jesus. She has to live with that and she's serving her time for that. And I think that is why lifers are at the top of this hierarchy in prison because we know as short timers or people with release dates that we get to go home and we know that they don't. And that is heavy. We try not to judge that person or or what have you. You know, I've mentioned many times on here that I've done time with lifers that have that have killed their abusers. So this is a very tough anomaly for me because we don't associate with people that have hurt children, but this is a very unfortunate circumstance where I do believe that it was an accident and it was just awful. I can't imagine the weight of that, of her knowing, you know, what had happened and she has to live with that, like I said, for the rest of her life. And man, how, how awful. That was just my worst nightmare as a new mother. I wanna end this video by saying something that someone had said to me in the comments, like I think last week or so. I'm pretty tough on Orange is the New Black when I talk to you guys about it. You know, the cast was very diverse and the first season was okay. But I'm pretty rough in my um, criticism of that show. Someone said to me in the comments, and I wish I screenshotted it so I could show you because it was such a great comment. They said, Orange is the New Black allowed people to see inmates as they are and see their story. And oftentimes they are victims of circumstance or it's so hard to get out of prison. And Orange is the New Black helped other people see that not everyone in prison is evil, that these are human beings with real lives and real stories and they have just made mistakes. And that comment is probably going to stay with me forever. So if you commented that, thank you so much for telling me that. I don't know why it's taken me so long to realize that because in my mind, I'm like, well, that's not real. That's not real. But that comment is so true. Inmates are just human beings that made a mistake and now they're serving their sentence and they're serving their times for that mistake. I'm gonna end today's video here. As always, I love you guys. Stay safe, stay in recovery. Try not to judge people for their worst mistake. And I will see you all in my next one.